Pini. Back and forth. Pini gigi, me guich. Pini gigi, me guich. Pini gigi. So we compromise, and now we just say, Pini guich. Pini guich. Pini guich. Uh, there, too. So we do a little tribal compromising there, too. Um, just a little bit of thoughts about endangered languages and the tribal languages here are very endangered. You know, when 1492, there were about 2,000 languages, dialects on Turtle Island. Today, about 165 are still spoken. 74 Native American languages are almost extinct. Uh, 58 indigenous languages have fewer than 1,000 speakers. 25 have, you know, from 1,000 to 10,000. And only eight have 10,000 speakers. You know, these are bigger tribes in the same process there, too. You're talking about all the tribes on Turtle Island. In Wisconsin, most, and I talk about the tribes that are the Ojibwe tribes here in Wisconsin and Minnesota. Um, most of the, my relatives, core group that I grew up with who were around the same age as I am, I'm, I'm 61. Um, I would say just about all of them can speak the language. There are a couple, there are a few. Um, most of them can't. The library will close at 8 p.m. Okay. Okay. That's, that's the hook. <laughs> but um, that's pretty much where indigenous languages are at now. Um, uh, most of them can't, you know. But there's a, there's a revitalization that is going on, and I think that's real important that is happening here, too. You know, so that we talk about the, if it continues, that's my prediction that the number would dwindle down to by 20, by 2050. Just a number that's still here are losing that. But many are still working on it very strongly in boarding schools and missionary schools. Uh, many of our children went to those particular schools to eradicate the language and the culture. Um, and if you just want to find more about boarding schools, just type in, Google it up, Indian boarding schools, and there's a lot of information you can find out there what the federal policies were uh, in that particular area, missionary schools at the same time, too. But, you know, I think for our future for, uh, is again is that we have a whole generation. We have a lot of young people now who are learning uh, the language. And because of the media and the type of technology that is able to uh, gain where they're starting to learn the language, you know, the young ones are teaching them more so. So we have a lot of different immersion schools and things that are going on and working that way. It's a slow process. It's very arduous and very difficult. But, you know, it's something that uh, many tribes are moving back in you know, that direction to maintain the particular language there too. Very difficult. Very hard. As I mentioned, English is surrounding by there too. Um, got a few more minutes left, and usually I wanted to spend a few more minutes um, just talking about a few things. And they talked about some music in our language. Um, this is called a dewey gun. And as I mentioned, the root word comes from the word o day. O day means heart. And so dewey gun, you can hear the root word in dewey gun from whence the sound of the heart comes from. One of our major instruments, not the drum, is one of our major instruments in almost all the tribal ceremonies. You have water drums, you have big drums, um, the small hand drums. Um, when they go to powwows, they have these bigger drums. And again, it's an instrument of singing uh, there too. And there's a song for everything that you can think about uh, there too. One of the other areas we do a shishiguan, uh, there's a rattle. This was made in Ecuador up in the mountains, the individual there I met, and she. Uh, this is her design on here too. So I used these here, but a lot of them were gourds. There were gourds. This is a natural gourd here. Uh, they use them in all of our ceremonies. <coughs> these here are other instruments too. This feather talks about the bird and the eagle. The eagle is the bird that flies the highest uh, in the sky. If you ever get a chance to watch an eagle soar, he'll simply just keep on going and going and going and going and going. And sometimes they'll get so high, you just see a little spot and then they disappear. You can't see them because they get so high there too. So they talk about that as the, the bird that flies highest to the creator. is a messenger between the earth and the messenger on top between here. So these are very important. We keep these as uh, part of a secular but also very uh, spiritual process there too. Um, and this day way again here. I usually teach what they call a Johnny Cake or I teach this little thing called da Indian Dance 101. Uh, so teach come in there and you go to a powwow. We'll be having the powwow here at the university on May. May 3rd at the university here at Quant Fieldhouse. So if you get the opportunity to go over there, that's more secular, it's more social. Um, the ceremonial powers, um, you just won't be able to attend. Um, you, and there's a reason for that there too. Uh, the government uh, in 1898 
uh, made a proclama proclamation that any Indian person practicing their spiritual ceremonies would be jailed. And so that stayed in place until 1994. But because of that scared, uh, pro the being the scared of, being the of the proclamation that you would be jailed if you practiced your ceremonies, they kept it in secret. And so you also have to keep it secret from the white people because they'll come and arrest you and disrupt the ceremony and the way you would go. So after about five generations, the younger generations and the men that come up don't really realize, they just know white people are not to come. But the origin of that comes from the fear that the army would come in and arrest you and you would go to jail. You know, so, but it's still adhered to today there too. But some uh, the older ones will still have people still come at periods of time there too. There's an old man. If you go to powwows, and the powwows you gotta stop on time. And this old man named Johnny Cake Martin, and uh, he was from La Couture Ray. <clears throat> and these old, well, I thought they were old men when I was a boy, about eight, nine years old. They were in their mid-30s, I thought they were old men uh, at that time. And so I was calling them old men uh, there. But they'd come pick us up and they would talk in Indian, and they would sing, and they would sing all of these different songs. One of the songs they sang was these pipe dance songs. It was a creation song. And in this creation song, they had these bells and these rattles. In the creation stories, we talk about the first sound was a rattle. And so they put these bells on them. It represents that first sound touching the earth. And that sound that we sent out is either good, and it's life giving or life taking the sound. Also, create thought, because that's what we were given from the Creator, too. The ability to create thought and create sound. And one of those sounds was built into our song. And this pipe dance song was a shaking song. It would stand in place and it would shake this rattle. It was simply. And the first part of the song is the shaking. <laughs> I just want you to shake it. You're going to learn how to stop. Last piece of song. What Johnny used to do, he used to sing his name. They'd sing that song there. They'd start out with this pipe dance song. And they'd say, Johnny would come out and take them rattles like that. He'd walk around and he'd shake them in front of us. And we'd sit around and he'd stop. And then we'd have to come out and start. And we'd start these pipe dance songs all evening. So the first part of the song is the shaking part. So you shake it. Shake it just back and on. You gotta get exercise. Last beat, you gotta stop. But you gotta listen now. So when they sing Johnny, they put this name in this song. So they start to learn that. So they go. Shake it and then stop. Okay, I want you to practice it down. Here we go. Your cake two times. Second cake, what do you do? You stop. Everybody raise your hand. You got some kind of little <coughs> keys or you got to imagine you got a rattle in your hand. Okay. I want you to shake. And the second cake, what do you do? Stop. Here we go. Again. Good. And then the song changes, and you hear cake four times. So there's two parts of the song, the shake part, and then goes the dancing part. That's where you dance. But you hear cake four times now. So you go. Go. 
That's when you stop. When you go to a powwow, you'll watch the dancers stop. They'll, they'll stop just like that. And you'll say, well, how do they know that? They do just what they're doing here. But also, when men, they have an affirmation. We don't clap in our ceremony. We just go, mm-hmm, you, oh, -ho. yeah, oh, -ho. good, mm-hmm, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if someone's talking, that's what they'll do. When Ella was talking to you, you might have noticed I might have been saying a few things. Like, mm-hmm, oh, -ho. Oh, oh, I was agreeing with her. I was, uh, yeah, it was an affirmation. I agreed with her. So we have men who will give war hoops. And so you go to Powell's, men will give war hoops. In the same process, it's an affirmation. So they go, It could be any variation, but it's up to you to do your own war hoop. War hoop is an affirmation. Because I like what I see, I like what's going on. I like myself, I like everybody, I just feel good. <laughs> you hear a strong war hoop. And my uncle also said when he passed away, his name was Bob Paulus, when I was younger, he said, you know, when the males dance like that at Paulus, he said they dance like peacocks. He said, get all them feathers and all those plumes and all those colors. And he said, just like them uh, peacocks, they're trying to attract the female. So he said, when you stop, he said, when you dance at a powwow and he's dancing, he said, you got to give a good war hoop. And he said, you got to see that female. And if you see her and you want to get her attention, you got to give a good, strong war hoop. So when you stop, he said, you look at her real quickly, but you turn around. So you'd be walking. Then you got to walk away like that. But you got to have a real strong war hoop. He said, you can't have one like. It, it doesn't do anything for him. Female, you're not going to get her attention. <laughs> so the males here, when we stop here, I want the males to give me a good war hoop. Okay, a good war hoop. See what kind of if you get there. And then the females, you can say, did it do anything for me or not? <laughs> it didn't. But females also have the same thing at Paulo's, and they call it um, I call it Lulu. But my friend, I could never do it. But my friend Keith Smith said, well, you got to think, Lulu. Lulu, you know, so you got to say Lulu in your tongue and use your tongue and go And that's what females do. That's their affirmation. So let me see the females do Lulu. There you go. They're getting up there too. So you just think of Lulu and get it right up there. So you go to Powers, you will hear the war hoop and you will hear the Lulu at the same time. Women will do that there too. So we'll do one time through. We do the shake, and then it goes, it goes slow, medium, and fast, three times through, same song. So at the end of the song, the, women have to do, the men have to do a war hoop, and then the women, you do your affirmation whether you, they did something for you or not. That's it. So the males, you got to do a war hoop. Let me hear you. Let me hear a practice war hoop for the males on three. One, two, three. <laughs> too bad. we got a few up there in the line up there, too. So here we go. As the drum goes, fast as your feet should be going. So you can see it's very aerobic once you get going there too. But if you go to Apollos, that's how dancers listen to the songs. They learn the songs, they learn the beat, and they know when to stop, and you'll hear to do the war hoops. Some can do flips. There's all kinds of different ways to stop there too. So, but I didn't hear any war hoops at the end there, so <laughs> females didn't give you no Lulu, so you didn't uh, do anything for them there uh, too, you know. Well, it's a very short period of time trying to teach you a few things or share a few thoughts. I want to thank you for taking your time out of your busy days uh, to come down here. I want to thank the library for doing this, the college for 
want to do this lecture series, and uh, Anna, El and I want <coughs> to come down and do this and uh, share some things, but it's a short period of time to share a lot of information uh, there, too. But again, I want to thank you for everyone who came down and helped, you know, and Todd for coming down to the introduction, take your time to come down here. In my language, you say, Meg what's in the ungo and the way God in my neck, but my water is saying, non gig ungo, non go money dug. Gagagi zuma gig and gagwe jamagwe when eh? Pegas negoshi what about unjibawad. Juan Mamanawa, we do count the Chumokaman in the way, Mag and Nama W. Mamma in a way with the gay. We know I must go by my demodes, you and Gikino Ma wishing care, I must go by my demodes, you and Minawa make good minawa you with the gay. Nay Tawis Mishnabish in the Kazo, Chumokan in the Kazo. <coughs> Andy Chinagishkabo <laughs> Gai in the go. I'm teasing him. The inside joke that we tease him there too. <coughs> but I'm just teasing him again. He's a, he's a good friend of mine. There's a lot of things here at the university, uh, at the department there. He helps me a lot, great through my classes and the students. Uh, there's a lot of different things. I always appreciate uh, his help. Uh, being at the university and the things that he does, he does a lot of real important things here at the university with the students, the programming and teaching and talking and all the things that he does. So he does a lot of those things uh, there too. And so I, I thank him for uh, doing that. And this allowed me to tease him there too. So. But he's a, he's a really good individual there too. Uh, his son's next to him too. So I thank his son for uh, coming along with his dad and helping support his dad. He's a student here also. Uh, Hudson's also the president of the American Student Association here. Uh, help organizing the powwow here too. He's also a good storyteller too. He has some good jokes that his dad told him and he's learned how to do too there too. So again, I want to thank each and every one of you for, uh, I'm sorry that we don't have enough time for uh, questions and answers, different things, uh, but I wanted to share just some little glimpse of the indigenous language, the importance of it and trying to maintain them and a lot of work that's going into that uh, process there too. And if you get a chance to go to the powwow over here at the Quant Field House on May 3rd, there's two sessions, one at 1 o'clock and one at 7 o'clock. Uh, you get an opportunity to see some of the dances there, too, and how they're, from, how they're used at that point in time there, too. I say miigwech. Miigwech. And we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.